Good afternoon to you. Mark Seth of HurricaneTrack.com here. It is no longer off-season. I mean, even though it is, you know, we got stuff to talk about, so I've scratched off the off-season portion of the hurricane outlook and discussion. Things are starting to get busy, so i got to change that graphic. I should just do that tonight and get it over with. But I crossed it out just for now because here we go. Things are starting to ramp up, and we have a lot to talk about this afternoon. This is the May 13th edition and even though it's not hurricane season yet, nature does not care, and so here we are. Right now, the only area that's on this particular map, this interactive map here from the University of Wisconsin, their tropical cyclone page, is the typhoon over here in the western Pacific. This is Typhoon Vong Fong. That is the international name for it. Um, locally, and we'll look at this again in more detail in a moment, it's known as AMBO. That's the Philippines area of responsibility that they call it. It's just weird how that works, but we accept it and go on, and that's the way it goes. We'll, we'll get to this in just a second. We're going to be watching very closely also the area off the southeast coast over here for possible development, as well as eventually something over here that could threaten in a big way, potentially, the Bay of Bengal, where you really don't want anything going. Trust me, historically, that is a nasty part. Uh, of the world in terms of tropical cyclone interactions with human beings. We've seen some bad stuff happen over there. All right, first up is the typhoon uh, Vong Fong, or whatever you want to call it. Doesn't matter, it's intensifying, has intensified, and could become the equivalent of a Category 4. It is threatening the Philippines. It's, gonna, it's already bringing rainfall in some impacts. It's fairly slow moving. And, you know, in the Philippines, they are dealing with the COVID-19 uh, just like anywhere else in the world. And so now, I guess, this will be the area that's first up for dealing with a tropical cyclone. We knew it was coming eventually. And so here you go. Uh, this will be coming in, uh, possibly. I mean, it still may just skirt the coast. You know how these things go. It's never 100% certain. Well, sometimes it is, but... There's still a little bit of uncertainty as to whether or not this actually makes landfall, but it's got a fairly well-developed eye. There is some dry air uh, still trying to get worked in from time to time. And yes, even West Pacific typhoons have structural issues from time to time. It's interesting that this is coming in pretty much where Tisoy did last year. Uh, if you remember that, that uh, came in you know, this very a similar, almost the exact same location. And... Every one of them is different, though. This one could intensify more. You know, the H wharf the other day, the hurricane weather research forecast model was suggesting that this could become pretty intense, and it's trying to do that. So, um, major problems over there. People are going to have to deal with this. Uh, our uh, Patreon supporter and field uh, guy, Brent, down in the Virgin Islands, he was there last year for Tisoy, and he actually has a friend who lives in the area. I've got a friend over there, too, a friend of our family's. Uh, but Brent's got a friend there, and she is going to hopefully get some video and give us some reports about what's going on. And if so, I will pass that along to you in tomorrow's update, or I might tweet it or something. But this is a big deal. This is important um, because it's a different world. We have to deal with this pandemic and the idea of social distancing with the worry of a tropical cyclone, in this case, a strengthening typhoon. Um, get rid of me for a moment. We'll see what Mr. Adcock was saying. Mike Adcock on Twitter showing the Joint Typhoon Warning Center forecast. And I'll click on this so we can zoom in and see what's up. And uh, this forecast shows it coming in, again, almost pretty much where Tisoy did last year. Uh, Tisoy is a little bit farther to the south there. Uh, but this will be coming in in uh, across, and I need to just learn the Philippines, I guess like the back of my hand. That's challenging because it's got a lot of different names, but I'll get there. But the bottom line is going to be the east side of the Philippines instead of just barreling straight through, uh, which means that a lot more people could be impacted overall, eventually getting up here to the uh, Luzon area. I, I think, and the, certainly the track forecast suggests it, there's Manila on the east side of Manila Bay. I do know that. Uh, and this will be far enough away to keep the core from Manila, but if it's big and sprawling and whatever, you know, you can get those outer rain bands, etc. 
and and this is a problem, you know, and people are going to have to deal with this uh, over the next few days. It's not moving very fast. But look, the forecast from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, bringing it up to 115 knots, you know, that's getting it. That would be a the U.S. equivalent of a Category 4. Here's a satellite animation. No, it's not. That was a satellite animation. This is a satellite picture, but instead of clouds, it's showing us upper ocean heat content. It's a satellite-derived product mostly i do believe uh and this shows us the upper ocean heat content and boy i gotta tell you this area right here the philippine sea you know it's not quite up at the top of the chart yet that'll come with time but it's very warm ocean water and that warm water is deep the 80 degree fahrenheit uh what we call the isotherm or the line of equal temperature it's not just that the the warm water is right up at the surface that warm water extends very deep. In some cases, perhaps a couple hundred meters or more, that warm water is in a very thick layer, and that's what those colors here show, at least a simplified explanation. It's actually physics and thermodynamics, but the simple way to understand it, the brighter the colors are on this map, the higher the upper ocean heat content, and Vong Fong there, uh, moving in this direction, is tapping into that, uh, and you can clearly see that. So that's one of the reasons why it is strengthening and is likely to continue to do so. So we'll be watching that closely. Hopefully we will hear from Brent's friend over there. And uh, and I got to talk to my, it's a friend of my father's actually, uh, that he knows through Rotary, Rotary Club, right? Rotary International, it's a civic club. He knows this gentleman. He lives in Manila. I think he's going to be okay. But Brent's friend, she lives down there closer to where this could be impacting directly. All right, in the Atlantic Basin, uh, high potential for development, a broad area of low pressure expected to develop late this week or early this weekend, near or within a couple hundred miles of the uh, north of the Bahamas, environmental conditions appear conducive for gradual development and a subtropical depression or storm. And I just wanna like add to this, they mean subtropical depression or subtropical storm not a tropical storm and i know it's like oh what's the difference well you know scientifically speaking there is a difference the overall results are almost the same it's a windy wave churning machine with rain and one is more concentrated and around the center than the other is one way to look at it a subtropical storm doesn't mean that it's less dangerous I mean, it is and it isn't, but it's complicated. Sometimes I just wish that it's just tropical storm and whatever. That's not my call. The bottom line is a system that could bring impacts is forecast to develop by the global models. 70% chance of development. Nothing there now. The pattern over here is changing. We're going to build a nice area of high pressure here over the mid-Atlantic southeast. And then down here, pressures are going to fall. Uh, and there's some cloudiness starting to gather now. And eventually this broad low pressure area is going to form. I'll be able to show you that on the uh, computer model output in just a moment. And it's likely to be up in this area and then move on out, maybe mill around, maybe get caught. It's going to be complicated, put it that way. It's going to churn up the water, uh, probably send some surf into this area here that's a little bit rougher than you're used to seeing. For those of you that can go to the beach, dadgum pandemic messing all kinds of things up. And that's part of it. Some beaches are open, some, pe some beaches are closed. Some beaches are open, but you can't park there. So what's the point? But huh, story for another day, I guess. Um, the satellite presentation that shows us vorticity. Not much there yet, just very light colors right here. This green color indicating not much energy um, coalescing. Almost said convalescing, but <laughs> that's different coalescing or congealing, whatever, uh, this will start to light up more and more. And really, this is a fascinating product. I, I use this a lot because this is my detective work that I love to show when we see something coming together, especially one of these loosely organized sort of hybrid system. I, I used the term mutt yesterday. It's got a little bit of a mix of tropical and a little bit of a mix of subtropical or a mid-latitude storm. Uh, and we'll be able to see all that come together and uh, we'll watch it through this product from the University of Wisconsin. I like it. It's a cool product. 
get used to it. We're going to see it a lot. And this is the same layer of the atmosphere that that product is, except this is the computer model simulation out in time. And I want to draw your attention to generally this area right through here as I step through the various hours. And there's 24 hours out right there. This is Thursday morning tomorrow. Look, there's that high pressure area I was telling you about building in ridging over the western Atlantic and the southeast United States south of it or below it as we say sometimes pressures can start to fall I'm gonna tell you this kind of a pattern if we see this in the hurricane season this will be farther to the north and east with time and then down below as we say I don't know I just I don't want to read too much into it but this is the kind of pattern that when that high pressure area is much more to the north and east as it would be in the summer and early fall you've got tropical cyclones coming in from the east over here we'll just have to wait and see this could be a particular of particular interest that this might show us an alleyway and the pattern for later on I don't want to read too much into it but these are the things we have to look for all right back to the topic at hand I got distracted by that my apologies but you do you gotta kind of see where this might lead for the future uh, anyhow steering rather than intensity or anything like that 48 hours out this is Friday morning it starts to get a little bit better organized and then right there off the coast of Florida and the northern Bahamas you can clearly see by hour 72 there's that energy trying to bundle up but it's still spread out and rather diffuse not concentrating water temperatures are not that warm yet the humidity down there the energy source the latent heat not there yet like it's gonna be later in the season so this is a combination of atmospheric conditions and upper ocean heat content and and humidity and latent heat and all that kind of stuff it's a blend it's May you know you're not supposed to have I don't know why I did that you're not supposed to have things coming together in rapid fashion, thank goodness. Nevertheless, the model shows the way. I really believe that. And it's got that shape. I mean, that looks like a tropical storm symbol. It's got the little arms there, you know. And I mean, this is why I love looking at this guidance because computer animation, and that's what this is. It's just a different form of computer animation. Let me move me over here. There we go. Um, the computer simulation is a better way to put it. That's what computer animation is. It's simulating our world with pixels. You know, whether it's a CGI spectacular movie like The Day After Tomorrow or The Avengers or whatever, or a completely CGI-based movie like something from Pixar or Disney Animation, the world of weather numerical prediction is very similar. It's zeros and ones showing us a simulated world and the model there is showing us the shape and I, I just think that's what excites me about this it's amazing that we can see that so there it is off the coast of Florida no impacts except maybe rougher surf around this area parts of the Bahamas etc some squally weather but don't get upset that oh my gosh this is gonna be a very bad hurricane season Yes, the pattern is interesting in how this is forming and what the pattern may be later down the road, but that's where it ends. This doesn't mean that we're going to have a lot of hurricanes hitting the United States. It's just something to take note of and tell you that, look, hurricane season is just about here. By day four, 96 hours, kind of spread out there. And again, water temperatures up this way, cooler. 78 79 degrees at best you know Fahrenheit so it's not that well concentrated maybe it finds the Gulf Stream there you know the, this is the the model knows enough about its world that it, it can see that so to speak and so it does show a little bit more robust of a system and then you got this sort of strange troughiness digging in over here maybe the, stu the two start to interact eh, whatever we're out to about six days so we'll see Maybe some interesting things coming up as this possibly gets captured and pivots around. Huh, it's going to be interesting. Did you notice the other piece of energy over here near Texas? This guy right there? Nope, not tropical in nature or whatever, but that's another piece of uh, energy kind of cut off from the main flow. 
And that could bring some rain and stormy weather for a prolonged period of time that's kind of slow moving. You folks over here, remember my sort of new slogan that I have uh, adopted in the past year? You know, we want you to be hurricane ready. That's my primary goal, but also make you weather aware, you know, because hurricanes are part of the weather. And if you're ready for hurricanes, you're ready for pretty much anything. So you folks in Texas, keep an eye on that little feature as well. And I'll talk about it as needed. All right. Elsewhere. Um, now, I do not know anybody personally in India or Bangladesh or anywhere along the Indian Ocean or the Bay of Bengal. But I will tell you this, if I did have friends over there, uh, and I'm sure I've got some viewers from YouTube and other social media platforms in that area, this is the same area of the atmosphere, 5,000 feet up, 850 millibars, and look at what happens in the model there. A very intense cyclone, and that's what they're called in this region of the world, by day six, into the Bay of Bengal towards Bangladesh and vicinity. Yuck! Uh, why is that a problem? And just in case you didn't know, this area here, you know what I want to do? I want to extract this image out and zoom in. I'm going to give you just a little bit of a lesson in case you were wondering. This is the shape that we refer to as concave. We could all agree to that. You funnel all that water and energy up in there, that right front quadrant. That's your storm surge area. And it just depends on where it makes landfall. I'm not an expert on Bay of Bengal uh, cyclones and the geography of the region, but I know enough to know that, generally speaking, bringing one of these into this area is a problem, and it funnels the water very efficiently. This could become big-time international news, as we're also tracking the typhoon that we talked about previously. You know, never mind what's potentially going to develop off the southeast coast. That's nothing compared to this potential catastrophe, especially if memory serves, it comes in a little bit more to the west over here into the delta there. Um, ah, what is that? I'm going to show my ignorance. I'm a geography degree holder, but that doesn't mean I know everything. Is that the, ah, is it the Ganges River Delta? You know what? I don't know everything. I'm going to Google it real quick while we're sitting here. Uh, okay, it's important. I want to have my facts straight. Um, Ganges River. Come on. I should have just had Siri do it. River Delta. Google. It's amazing, isn't it? It looks like the Ganges River Delta is a river delta in the Bengal region of the Indian subcontinent. Bingo! <laughs> now I'm going to gloat because I knew what I was talking about. But truly, it's important that we get our facts straight with all the you-know-what out there. i got to make sure I'm right. And facts matter. So the Ganges River Delta, yes, coming in right on top of that where the right front quadrant really pushes in that surge uh, can be a big deal. So we'll watch this very closely and see how things progress. And we will be hoping for our friends over there even though I don't know anybody personally. Everybody's my friend on the globe, right? I mean, we're all connected, and the weather connects us unlike anything else. I think second only to sports. And that's true. That's why I use so many sports analogies. The weather's number one. It really is. The weather controls everything that we do, whether you believe it or not. Sports is probably a hard number two there that so many people are connected for their love of sports. But the first thing is the love of weather. All right, I'm going to shut up so I can get out of here. i got a lot of other stuff to do. A lot to keep up with. I'm going to fix that title card there, whatever you call it, uh, and it'll just say Hurricane Outlook and Discussion going forward because, by golly, Mother Nature wants to start off things early, and why not? 2020 has just been a real beast already, so why the heck not, I guess. We'll just deal with the punches as they come, and we'll roll with them, I suppose. What else are we going to do, right? We can only stand up and try to fight back, and then we can do that with knowledge and information and awareness in this situation. All right? All right, I'll do my part. You do yours by taking that knowledge and doing something impactful with it. Please, I want you there to watch future updates. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.